is Kurt Davis with Real Estate Wealth Coaching and I want to thank you for checking in on us again. Today's video we are going to talk about joint venturing or as some people may refer to it JVing. Uh, it's really just another fancy word for actually partnering. So uh, before we actually get into that, uh, if this is the first video of ours that you've seen, if you're brand new to us or our channel or if, or if you're a repeat uh, watch or a subscriber. If you have not yet, make sure to click the subscribe button and like the video, share it, leave a comment. Just we'd love to hear from you. So uh, we love the feedback from our fans. So getting into it now, joint venturing. This is going to be talking uh, along the lines of wholesaling. A lot of new people when they get into real estate, they start out at a wholesaling level. So uh, joint venturing simply means that you are partnering. One of the things that you really need to do if you are going to JV with somebody is to make sure that all your expectations are very clear <clears throat> and you want to make sure that they're very clear and laid out from the very beginning. Uh, some people even go to the lengths of creating some type of joint venture agreement. You can find these things online. You can even create your own. Essentially what you're doing is you're going to spell out in detail what each each other's role is going to be. and you're going to sign the document. I also suggest that if you're going to JV and partner with somebody to do it from the very beginning. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that they're going to be your partner for life, but if you're going to get together with somebody, uh, I, I like to see people do it from the beginning because it's a lot more confusing and messy if somebody comes into uh, a partnership while something's already happening. And I think I'll have an example for it here in a little bit, but um, do it from the get go. Uh, in real estate, everything is negotiable. So one thing that's really important for people who are partnering together are, should you successfully close on a deal, what's going to be the profit or the commission splits? Uh, again, that will be determined on how you spell it out, uh, what you agree on, but typically it's 50-50. Like I said, usually people are partnering with, with somebody for one reason or another. Maybe somebody is really good at finding deals and another person is really good at selling them. Uh, those two roles there complement each other. Another thing that you need to do that's very, very important is, is when you have a transaction that closes and it's closing with the closing attorney, make sure that the closing attorney is cutting a check to each of you at the same time at closing. You don't want to really have a relationship where uh, one person gets the full commission and then you have to wait and rely on them to cut a check. I'm not saying that people are going to be unethical, but at some point in time, I'm sure something has happened like that to somebody out there. You don't want to be that person. So just make sure that you both get paid at the same time. <clears throat> All right. So I've got a, got a couple of examples here that I want to just kind of run by, just some things to think about. Um, have to refer to my trusty notes here, of course. So the example situation here is what happens when a person or a wholesaler has a home under contract and they are going to partner with, partner with somebody like, so if I'm the wholesaler and I got a house under contract and somebody comes to me and says, hey, you've got a property, great. Uh, let's partner up together and let's see if I can't bring a cash buyer. Okay, great. We're going to partner up together. What happens if I, as the wholesaler who have the house under contract, sell the house on my own without any assistance from the person that I just said I was going to partner with, should they get 50% of the profit or not? In my opinion, uh, I would not think that they would probably get any of the profit just because I've got the deal and I sold it. The benefit in the relationship there, I think, would be that if they brought the buyer then they're going to get their cut. And that kind of goes back to why I think that people should partner up from the get-go. Because if they partnered up from the get-go, maybe they would have signed an agreement and they would both be the one who got the deal under contract with the seller. So regardless of who sold it, they're still going to make their profit. So that's one example. And this next example is just a little more confusing. And this is where... I don't want to say things could go wrong here, but I might have to read a little bit from my notes here to make sure I get this out correctly. So two people partner up, joint venturing. And this is this may be an example from say say I'm the wholesaler, I've got the house under contract, and someone else comes in and they want to be 
the cash buy. They're they're going to bring a cash buyer. Fantastic. Now we've partnered up, and let's say that with this particular deal, our target profit is fifteen thousand. If we can wholesale and sell the house at the price we need to, we will make a gross total of fifteen thousand. Which in theory we would split fifty fifty, and I'd get seventy five hundred, and they'd get seventy five hundred. Now, what I have seen and and, and as well as heard of uh, people doing is, is the the wholesaler who has the wholesaler brings a cash buyer but what they do is they say hey we were only able to sell it at they're only offering this price which drops the profit from fifteen thousand dollars down to ten and the other the wholesaler who has the house agrees to that what happens then is is the wholesaler who brought the buyer puts a contract in place between the main wholesaler with the property and his in theory partner and it's for ten thousand for a profit of ten thousand what that wholesaler then does is put another assignment contract in place with the actual cash buyer for the actual price he sold it to so what that looks like at the end of the day when the transaction closes is is now they both split the ten thousand dollars so they each get five but the other wholesaler wholesaled it at the higher price never told his initial partner about it so one partner gets five thousand and the other gets ten uh, in my opinion, that's some very shady, shady dealings, and those are the things that you want to stay away from. Uh, that's why if you're wholesaling and you joint venture with somebody and they come into the transaction, if they do bring a buyer, you make sure that you are the one handling the paperwork and that your assignment contract is between you and the actual buyer, not you and your partner. Something's fishy there. So at the end of the day, joint venturing can be something that works out very beneficial. I know... Uh, a couple guys here locally who they don't want to deal with buyers. They're really good at acquiring property, but they joint venture and partner with somebody else who is more of a, say, a people person, and they do have cash buyers, and the relationship works great. So uh, partnering can be very good, but at the same time, if the market is super hot, uh, it's probably easier to not have uh, a partnership. A lot of times I see it where people are new. A lot of new people want to partner up with somebody, maybe because they have not done a direct mail campaign yet to start acquiring leads. Whatever the reason is, uh, there's pros and cons either way. We could argue it either way all day long. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's up to you to decide if it's something that you want to do. So with that being said, uh, we do thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, like it. Again, make sure to subscribe, share it. Leave a comment. Let me know if I missed something. Let me know if I made a mistake. Uh, either way, we will see you on the next video.